with us through this season, Lord, and all our earthly days, that when the final Easter dawns, we join in heaven's praise. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hello. I am Pastor George Poulos, and I lead a double life. I suspect you do also. Because there's the outward part of my life, the part people see, and then there's the inward, the part you can't see. Oh, sometimes they're on the same page in agreement, but oftentimes they're not. Probably more often, if I could see with the eyes that God sees. In fact, the two are often different as night and day. So on the outside, you might see a good work or two. You don't see how grudgingly it is often done. On the outside, you see a smile. You don't know the pain. Perhaps you see dedication. You're not aware of the indignation at having to do what someone else should have done. You see a teacher. You don't know the reluctant, stubborn student. You hear good words. You don't hear the grumbling of my heart. You see hands that help. You don't perceive the bitterness brewing deep down. You see generosity. You don't realize the covetous desires. You see a well-dressed, clean-cut fellow. You don't fathom the ugliness, the darkness, the cesspool of sin in my own heart. You see what I want you to see. I hide the rest. You too? Yes, you too, for sure. Is that not what Jesus was talking about when he said, beware, beware? He's speaking to us who lead a double life. That it's not only not good to do so, but it's dangerous. No, I may not be sounding the trumpet when I give to the needy. I may not be on the street corners praying, and I may not disfigure my face with fasting. But am I not doing the same thing? Am I not as bad? Am I not a hypocrite, as Jesus calls them? Me? You too? You too. For sure. Beware. Beware. Don't be fooled. You can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, and maybe you're so good you can fool all the people all the time, including yourself. But the word of God today is this you and I cannot fool God. Ever, ever, your Father sees what is in secret, and your Father rewards accordingly. Which isn't good news for me, or you, for sure. But we're not alone, and this is nothing new. The people in the day of the prophet Joel were doing it also. And so the Lord said to them, as we read in our scripture of the Old Testament tonight, rend your hearts, rend your hearts, not your garments. Enough of the hypocrisy. Enough of the outward show. Tear open your heart, that filthy, horrible, sin-infected heart. Why? To return to the Lord your God. To return to the Lord your God. For He is gracious. He is merciful. Slow to anger. 
and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Because God doesn't want the disaster for you. And he doesn't want the danger for you. He wants to clean out your heart with his mercy. To clean out your heart with his love. With his gracious forgiveness. All hearts, in fact. All the people. The congregation. The elders. The children. The nursing infants. The brides. The bridegrooms. He says this all through the prophet Joel. And he declares it openly and clearly. So that's exactly why we are here tonight. To return. To repent. That's why Ash Wednesday. That's why Lent. Not only these times, but especially these times. And the ashes on our foreheads? Oh, we can be hypocritical about these ashes on our foreheads too. If we wear them and receive them as some kind of a show. But really, that's my outward beginning to look like my inward. But only the beginning. Because my inward is a lot worse than just a little smudge on the forehead. You too? You too. For sure. But there is one for whom this was not true. One whose inward perfectly matched his outward. One who did not lead a double life. And one who was no hypocrite at all. And we heard what happened to him. The scriptures say it well in our reading of the epistle tonight. God made him to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So on the cross, on Jesus, there is your sin. There's the danger. There's the curse. There is what you deserve. There is your father seeing in secret. And there is your father paying openly. But it's on Jesus. It's on Jesus. And not on you. That's why Christmas. That's why Good Friday. So that in Jesus, in His taking our place, our hearts may be rightly made again with God. Our hearts may be made right with a holy God. That grace issues from his holy face. For he does not turn away from us in anger. He does not turn away from us in indignation. But turns to us in the face of his son. Who came for us and came for our salvation. And who comes now for the same. His water washing us. His word forgiving us. His food feeding us in the bread and the wine, the body and the blood, that we be right with God, that our outward matches our inward, not in blackness and darkness and smudges, but in cleanliness, not in filth, but in holiness, in the righteousness that only God provides. But actually, it's far much more than that our outward matching our inward. It is God himself joining together again what sin has rent asunder. For earlier we heard those horrible, horrible words. First spoken to Adam after his fall into sin. Dust you are, to dust you shall return. What that means is that sin causes things to fall apart. It means that sin causes things to come apart at the seams. And so humankind, man and woman, created to live, not to die, 
will die. Our inward and our outward has come apart. Our bodies will fall apart at the seams and they will become dust. Our world is falling apart, coming apart at the seams. Relationships fall apart. Everything, it seems, if we look intently, everything, it seems, is coming apart. But in Jesus Christ, everything is brought back together again. The dust into which we will turn will be reunited into our bodies again in the resurrection. And even more, we will be reunited into our bodies again in the resurrection and be reunited into that perfect fellowship with God that was the reality in the beginning. The relationship God established with his creation, that which we were created to be a part of with God. That has begun already now with the cleansing of our hearts in forgiveness and our adoption as sons and daughters of God in Jesus Christ. So on this day when we recognize the reality and that we recognize the seriousness of our sin, this very first day of Lent, we also look forward to the last day of Lent when our Lord Jesus says from the cross, it is finished. And the joy of Easter will begin. The joy which will reach its fulfillment on the last day. When our Lord Jesus Christ returns in glory. The day of that final Easter. That final Easter which will never end. Until that day, we discipline our bodies. Until that day, we strive and we wrestle with our doubts we strive and we wrestle with our double lives until that day we repent and receive our true, tr true treasure, the body and blood of Jesus. The body and blood born for you, the body and blood died for you, risen for you, given to you, and returning for you. Beware of everything else. For only in Jesus is your hope and your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of Almighty God, which surpasses all human comprehension, guard and protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.